uh, steel you're looking at up here in the right hand corner, uh, that ugly burn was caused because topside did not pay attention to the uh, volume of the O2. And as the volume dropped off, the uh, pressure dropped off, and the change in the pressure uh, caused this bad, ugly burn. We're getting ready to do some uh, dry burning and some wet burning. But first we're gonna look at uh, some cleaned up burns, and we're gonna look at the track of the burn in the steel um, it'll look a lot prettier than this ugly burn you're looking at right now. And we'll talk about the penetration of the rod and the angle of the rod and what we were doing on each uh, one of these pieces of steel. Then we'll go right into the dry burning section. This is a piece of 5 8 You can see that uh, the penetration at the top of this piece of metal, the rod is just into the metal. There's a little shoulder up there at the top. It's an even penetration, smooth burn, no radical changes in, uh, in the angle of the rod. This is a piece of three-quarter inch steel. Um, you can see the penetration ridge down there at the bottom. Uh, this piece was burnt uh, pretty much 90 degrees. That uh, took just slightly over one rod to burn that piece of steel. This is a piece of uh, inch and a quarter. Uh, you get a good look at the uh, rod penetration groove there at the bottom. You can see the track of the O2 through the steel. Um, that O2 is going to flow through the steel at the angle coming out of that rod. Now this is a piece of two inch here. This was burnt with a very hot machine. You see a, just a very slight groove. This piece was uh, burnt right on the edge. It's a very clean, fast burn, but uh, any variation in, uh, in, in that would have been lost. So penetration gives you a little bit of control and lets you uh, work against the steel. When you've got a very slight penetration, you can travel faster, but you're on the edge of losing it. This is a piece of two and a half inch steel here, and you can see the uh, rod groove at the bottom of the steel. Over on the left, you can see where uh, the rod was walked around the corner. Instead of rocked around the corner, the rod was walked around, and that edge was burnt out. When uh, we pan this camera back to the right. In the upper right hand corner, you're going to see a little V. And that's where a hanger was almost left. It'll be uh, right at the end of the steel there, that little V there. That was almost a hanger. All right. Here we are on rod starts. We're dry burning. We want to have a good uh, dark welder's lens on, a shield, good pair of coveralls, good pair of boots tucked under them coveralls. I want you to rot, watch this rod. It's being struck up in the end of the steel. He's not starting to travel right away. He's heating that steel up, slowly straightening the rod up and starting to travel. Now he's starting to travel. You get the rod around the corner of that steel and burn out the end. Getting that steel good and hot. Slowly starting to travel. Your start rate and your finish rate are different than your travel rate. A rod change is a start and a finish, and that's where most hangers are left. So watch as this rod is struck up on the edge, slowly rocked around the corner. You make sure you cut out that end and then start your rod travel. Uh, one of the problems people have is starting too fast 
and finishing too fast. So when you're starting that rod up, you want to make sure that the area you're starting in is burned before you start your travel. You do that by getting the rod a little too deep into the steel to move easily. And you keep the pressure hard up against the steel. Rocking that rod around that corner and cutting that corner out. Making sure that area is cut in the back. Starting his travel. Slow and steady. You need even amperage. You need even O2 flow. And you need even movements. You can change your angle, you can move your rod around, but they need to be slow, even movements. They can't be jerky. All right, now we're seeing him come in to a, make a spot for a rod change. Bringing it in, he slowly rocks the rod around to cut the back side of that metal out. And he creates a thinner spot to start his next rod. Okay, seeing him travel in, he gets in just a little deeper and slowly rocks that rod around, slows his travel down a little bit and creates the spot for his next rod. I want you to notice that uh, the burner is not in front of this cut. He does not have his face in front of the cut. He's off to the side, dragging that rod towards himself. All right, we're going to start the rod up. We're going to travel down the steel. And then we're going to finish the rod with a rock around and create a spot for the next rod. Again, I want you to notice he is not in front of that cut. He's bringing the cut towards him. He's standing to the side. There's no light around the front of that rod. On his side of that rod, that rod is tied up against the steel in contact. It's uh, 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch penetrating the steel. And on this thicker steel, he's pretty close to 90 degrees to the steel. On uh, thinner steel, uh, the angle might be uh, 45 degrees to the steel. Now he's slowly rocking that rod around and creating a spot to start his next rod. He's made a thinner spot in the steel. It'll heat up quicker, less chance of leaving the hanger. Most hangers, for people who can run a rod, are left at that rod change. Again, look at the front of that rod. You see a little light around the top of it, a little light around the bottom of it, a little behind it. You don't see any light where that rod's in contact with the steel. Think of that penetration groove we saw on most of the steel. He's tight up against that steel on his side, traveling with the rod. As he gets down to the end of the rod, he penetrates just a little bit more and slowly rocks that rod around to create the thin spot for his rod change. Uh, for dry burning, if you get yourself set up on a, a piece of inch and a half, two inch steel, you want to get your ampering settings about one half what's called for in the handouts. Your O2 pressure's uh, down around 90 pounds, and it will run in the steel dry just like it would in the water. So you can have your shields on, you can stand around and watch each other. 
you can learn the technique you need in the water in the dry. I call it dry burning. It's much easier than trying to pick it up in the water at first. Okay, now he's coming down towards the end of that rod. You'll get in just a little deeper. His rod travel will slow down a little, and he slowly rocks the rod around and creates that thin spot. Some people will tell you that uh, when you're burning, you cannot change the angle of your rod or you'll leave a hanger. You can change the angle of that rod. It just has to be a slow, even change. We'll see a little more uh, angle change a little further on in this dry burning section. Uh, this uh, this will burn your eyes just like welding, so you need to have those dark welder shields on uh, or don't watch the burn. It works best with uh, two or three of you. Uh, one of you running a knife switch and uh, two of you talking to each other and watching it with the shields while you're doing it. Remember, there's no light around the front of that rod. The front of that rod is in hard contact with the steel. He slowly rocks it around and creates that thin spot to start the next rod. He takes his time on the start, walks it around that end and makes sure the back's cut out. Slowly starts his travel. In your handouts, you'll get uh, O2 and amperage settings for the tubular steel rods and for the exothermic type rods. Again, on uh, dry burning, uh, if you'll set your amperage for the tubular steel about uh, half what it's called for in the handout and your O2 uh, 90 pounds or a little less, uh, you'll be able to make that rod run just like it would in the water. If you get too deep into the steel to travel, you want to keep your rod tight against the steel. And you let it consume itself up a little bit, and it will start to travel. Remember, you're moving in two directions. You're feeding this rod in, and you're pulling it in a direction you're cutting. So you're moving two directions. That's why keeping it tight against the steel uh, helps gain you a little bit of control. Get it penetrated in there a little bit. Now you'll see him slow down again, slowly rock that rod around and create that thin spot. Okay, we're going to do a little vertical cutting here. And there's some things I want you to note, uh, particularly the changes of the angle. Um, how he rocks this rod around. But again, he's not in front of that cut. The cut's off to his side. He's standing to the side of it. When he gets down towards the bottom, you'll see him rock that tip around to his left and actually burn the back out before he burns the front out. With this tubular steel rod, if you're not in contact with a steel, you're not burning. So you can't burn the front out first. You have to burn the back out first, or you'll leave a hanger. We'll see it again from a little bit different angle here. Uh, he'll burn down, and he'll rock that rod around and cut out the back side first. Notice all the rock arounds are at a slow, even pace. They're not jerky at all. Okay, you see the back being cut before the front. 
Again, we'll look at it from this side. In this case, the bottom of that rod is hard up against the steel. That's the part of the rod that's penetrating the steel. For myself, it's much easier to burn down than it is up. If I've got to make a vertical cut, uh, and I can possibly do it, I'll burn from top to bottom. Uh, watch how he cuts that back out, just slowly rocking that rod around. Again, you need to have a good pair of gloves, leather gloves on, good pair of coveralls, boots tucked up underneath your coveralls, a helmet and a welder shield. There's a lot of fire flying here. It's good to have a fire bottle sitting out there, some water. Slowly rocking that rod around. 